Hi everyone, I'm Julia from Cranic Solar. Thanks for joining our webinar today with Solar Edge. Before we get started, I'm just going to give a quick presentation about Cranic. Cranic Solar is headquartered in Germany and was founded by Kurt Cranic. Since being founded, Cranic has expanded into 23 different countries with the capability to ship to over 100 countries. Cranic Solar has been a strong partner to PV installers since 1995 and offers everything that is required to begin and finish your solar installation. Our international purchasing power helped us build strong relationships with your favorite manufacturers, such as SolarEdge, to secure the best pricing and availability. With a growing market share, Cranic is a privately owned and self-financed company that ranks among the leading solar wholesalers worldwide. Our experience in delivering solar products worldwide for the last 26 years has made us experts in our field. In 2005, Cranic expanded into the US with our US headquarters in New Jersey. We also have branches in California, Florida, and are expanding into Texas with additional warehouses across the nation. We are growing every day, so keep an eye out for where we might be next. Our U.S. team consists of over 80 employees that service the Americas and strive to offer the best services and options to our partners. Throughout the years, we have grown our product portfolio to provide over 5,000 products. We have partners with leading manufacturers worldwide to offer the best material for a project of any size, whether it's an off-grid system, four-panel shingled roof, or a megawatt flat roof. Working with Cranic means you'll never work alone. With our streamlined ordering process, each customer at Cranic receives a dedicated sales rep to walk them through each step of the ordering process, from project design to on-site delivery. The solar industry is always innovating and changing. At Cranic, we do our best to make sure you know the latest products and technologies available. We team up with industry leaders and seasoned professionals to train you firsthand on everything you need to know, and it'll always be for free. And this concludes my portion of the webinar. Here's our contact information if you would like to reach out for a quote or if you have any questions regarding the products or services we offer. And if you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel, please feel free to ask them in our question box and we will be answering them at the end of the presentation. Thank you again for joining us. And now I'm gonna be passing it along to our presenters from Solar Edge, Varsha, Kleber, and Jeff. Thank you so much, Julia. Thanks for hosting us. All right, let's see here. Right. Yeah, got it, thanks, Clever. Okay, welcome again, everyone, uh, to our webinar on what's new uh, in Solar Edge community, commercial and industrial. I am uh, Varsha Murthy, a senior product marketing manager at Solar Edge, and the other speakers joining me in this webinar are Kleber Fakini, who is our Director of Technical Marketing, Commercial and Utility, and Jeff Laffey, who is a Senior Applications Engineer at SolarEdge. With that, let me walk you through our agenda for today. Next slide, please. Um, so Kleber will be going through uh, the updates that we've made through our commercial suite. And that includes a sneak preview to our 330 kilowatt ground mountain water that's coming very soon. Um, and the next gen S series power optimizers overview as well, followed by Jeff um, doing the design considerations for the S series. Um, and then I will be doing a quick walkthrough of the monitoring screenshots uh, and our advantage program uh, before we open up the floor for Q&A. All right, with that, let me turn it over to Clever to get us started. All right, folks, uh, good morning. This is uh, Clever Fakini, and uh, thank you, Varsha, for the introductions. Welcome, everyone. I appreciate your audience today. And uh, so, as uh, one, one item, oops, it's, uh, one thing that uh, I want to make sure, right, I mean, that uh, we, uh, that we're showing here is that, I mean, as Varsha said, so this is a, uh, Really, one thing that we want to start I mean, that I want to make sure that you folks understand is that I mean, this is for commercial applications, what we're presenting, and also for community solar. You may have noticed, I mean, our first slide is that we put the term CCI, and it's for community, commercial, and industrial. So, uh, and the fact, I mean, there is a uh, one of the 
products that we're uh, going to be uh, briefly introducing here that we're going to be releasing uh, later this year. It's a larger string inverter, which is great and it's perfect for community solar, for ground mount community solar applications. Okay. But with that in mind, let's just uh, start I mean, with our commercial solution, which we have a very, uh, very good products. And also we have news, I mean, we have like a new features. We actually we have a, a new optimizer that we want to introduce here today, okay? So uh, <clears throat> this is the uh, a, uh, commercial solution that we have. I mean, we started from the left hand side. So I'm showing here like a typical rooftop application. Uh, this is the uh, with the power optimizer, DC power optimization, and we'll talk about the S1200 1201, which has been uh, we have released uh, last RE plus in September at Anna. Okay, so that's the DC optimizer is a two to one optimizer. We also have inverters. Uh, we have a very good offering on that from 10 kVA all the way to 120 kVA. Which is spam, right? I mean, it's 208 and also 480. And we'll talk more details of that. And we also have also one thing that uh, we'll be talking more this year, and I mean, uh, in other webinars, is that we also have uh, sensors and we have accessories. We have a uh, weather sensors, we have an uh, energy meter, revenue grade meter that we want to make sure that you folks understand that can be purchased from us. And we have also a software suite, right? I mean, uh, to monitor uh, the inverter, inverter and optimizer and any other uh, equipment that you have inside. So uh, bottom line, right, I mean, what we're gonna be talking is that uh, we, uh, we want to make sure that you folks understand and the benefits, right, I mean, of the DC optimizer of our architecture is that uh, we like I me mean, to make sure that everyone understands is that because we use the DC optimizer, the DC optimization, uh, three items, right? Is that we always need to make sure that's understood. Is that one because of DC optimization is that uh, we reduce balance of system costs, and why is that? Because we are able to have uh, more panels per string, up to 60 modules per string, and therefore fewer strings. Uh, we have uh, uh, increased in energy production. We are seeing up to, I mean, anywhere, anywhere between five to ten percent increase in energy production uh, for a typical rooftop and ground mount applications. And why is that? Is because we are able to do better with panel mismatches, right? So we do MPPT at a more granular level. Uh, another factor of that is that uh, we have, uh, the, from an O&M perspective, operation and maintenance perspective, is that we're able to have better visualization of what's going on at the, at the array. So that means that you don't need to have IV curve tracing. You don't need to be, uh, don't need to be doing drones uh, inspection and also be doing thermal imagery because you, we know and we're able to give, like for instance, burn dial uh, uh, warnings of uh, of panels and safety, right? Which is very important. That we're seeing, we have seen some issues going on, some events, you know, I mean, that happened in the industry last year. Make sure that uh, we, with our solution, that we have the safety C, which brings voltage down to safe levels. Have arc fault detection, prevention, surge protection, and also there is a one sense connect feature that we're going to introduce today. We uh, uh, we have it's the best, the safest. Uh, solution that we uh, that the industry has. Okay, so just one out one slide here. Uh, I want to make sure that we remind everyone that we have a, a software tool, a software package for designing, so called designer, Solar Edge Designer. So this is a, a free tool, and uh, that we want to make sure that you, our customers, and your folks understand that this is available for you. This is something that. Uh, with that tool, you're able to design your own system by yourself, and you're able to understand them. You're able to validate the design with the optimizer. I mean, you put your put information from a panel perspective, panels that you're using, what the, where the where the site is, and then there is the tool guides you, directs you 
on what to use, the inverter to use, <clears throat> the optimizer to use, and it validates the design to you. And uh, it's what is, I mean, that's a cool feature is that it goes from once you're done, it also imports, exports, right? I mean, to the monitor platform so that you can monitor the system from the monitor platform. Okay, so it's a free tool and we'll be putting more classes in the that towards uh, the end of uh, Q2 of, uh, of this year. But if you have any questions, please reach out to us. So uh, I believe you've seen, you folks have seen this before, but uh, we have, uh, this is their lineup we have from three phase inverters, the three phase line, lineup for commercial industrial applications. On the three phase inverter, uh, we have, uh, so those are single units and we have 10. We have, I, mean, I want to point out that we have a 10 kilowatt that's being uh, released and it's all the, uh, the CEC listing right now, so that's 208 volt CC. We have the 10 to 173, and also we have a 30 and a 40 K at 480. And then we also have the, the synergy units, which is larger uh, inverters. We have 50 KW at 208 and 80, 100, 110. 120 at 480 volts DC. Okay. One more item that we have here that I want to point out that's new is that 170% DC to AC ratio. That's something that we introduced uh, in the fall of last year, but I want to point out that that's something new. What else? I mean, from a synergy perspective, right? I mean, from like the inverter, the synergy inverters, that's like the 50 kW at 208 to the 80, uh, 100 and 110. 80 or 480 volts AC. Uh, we, it's been, I mean, say so have safety, right? I mean, from a, uh, we, we monitor the temperature on the DC and AC uh, terminal blocks. <clears throat> we have surge protection devices. We have the pre-commissioning uh, feature. Uh, we also have PID rectifier. Those are things, right? I mean, those are great features that our customers tell, but I want to highlight the new features that we have recently introduced that you may have missed this. One is the 175% DC to AC ratio, okay? Uh, and which is great, I mean, as the modules, right, start to get larger. And also the DC single input. Uh, this is a, uh, we are going to be introducing a webinar in about two to three weeks. I wanna be doing a webinar dedicated for that. And that's to reduce cable costs. So uh, in other words, in summary is that in Instead of having to bring uh, string wires, right, each string to the inverters, you can do DC, you can use a DC combiner near the array and then bring just uh, aluminum cables, combine everything and bring uh, one or two pairs of aluminum cables uh, back to the inverter at a loca uh, lo lo localized in a central location. That means that you can save on DC cabling and also you can even put you know, your inverters at the, at the ground level if desired. So there will be more, there will be a dedicated uh, webinar for that in the next two to three weeks that will be sending the notice to everyone. So we talked about the commercial CNI. So now let's talk about something that's coming soon and we're very excited about the uh, our new larger inverter for brown mount, the 330, 2030 KW inverter, 15 under both DC. And like I mentioned before, this is great. I mean, the, our customers are already designing with uh, with our uh, this inverter for community solar applications, right? So we're uh, the, the 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 actual uh, release is going to be during our plus. That's kind of when we are planning right now. Uh, that's going to happen in September, I believe. It's going to be in Las Vegas. So that's when the inverter is going to be going. If you have any questions? If you have a site that you think would be take good advantage of that, please contact us and we'll have our, our applications engineer to contact you, okay? So a little bit of this product. So this is a product and also it uses DC optimization. So as you can see, I mean, this is the inverter on the left hand side. So it's a 43 inches uh, wide by 36 inches tall and uses optimizers, DC optimizers. So it uses the H1300 optimizers at this point, so meaning What's H1300 is that you can, can take uh, up to two modules of maximum 650 watt modules. Okay, so that's the platform that will be released sometime in the next, in the, this coming fall. Some more specifications here. So I'm not going to be going one by one. However, if 
have any questions, again, let us know. But the, the summary is 380 kW inverter or KVA up to 45 Celsius or 113 Fahrenheit, 690 volts AC, uh, 200% DC to AC ratio. Mentioned before, it's 1500 volts. Uh, we have AC and DC surge protection similar to what we have on the synergy units. And one, one thing that uh, we're also excited is that this inverter, it has, uh, has two options to start with. I mean, it's a DC single input, so bring it, again, it's great you know, for virtual central uh, applications where you're clustering all of the inverters together to reduce DC cabling and to reduce the balance of system. Okay, so it's, a, it's a right now single DC input. And later on in 2024, there will be also an option for uh, up to 20 inputs for distributed topology. If you want to place the inverter close to the other, okay? Uh, three, about 350 pounds and IP66 rating for protection. A few more uh, points on the product. You can use this is way ahead in the of, uh, of its time at this point, but we are. This uh, inverter, if needed, can, uh, has full VAR uh, availability. So in other words, it can produce the whole 330 kVA uh, S VAR, so 330 K VAR. And if needed, we can also, uh, the inverter can do VARs at night. So far, there's no requirement, but we see that coming. So we want to, we want to have that ready. Uh, so, we mentioned about the built-in temperature sensor DC AC terminal blocks. We have PID uh, rectifier, pre-commissioning feature in case if you want to, as soon as you connect the DC panels, as soon as there is DC uh, connection, you can start running you know, your uh, pre-commissioning, making sure that the inverters, I mean, the software is right, settings are correctly, and then uh, to, uh, to uh, save time, you know, I mean, once AC is available. Optimized, like I said, for both centralized and distributed, and uh, for on the DC and AC side, you can accept aluminum and copper. All right, so we talked about the 330. Now switching gears here, let's talk about the S1200 and S1201. This is the new optimizer that we have for commercial applications, okay? So for the three-phase inverters and also for the synergy units, this is the new optimizer that we have available. And that uh, if you order today, that's the optimizer that you're going to get. So we'll talk later the specs, but that's 1200s because it, uh, it supports up to two 600 watt uh, modules in series. So why? S, right? I mean, before we had, like, I mean, for folks that are used with our topology, we had the P, P950s, P860s, right? I mean, P1100s, and now we're switching to S, which is uh, S stands for Sense Connect, okay? And what what is the Sense Connect? So, uh, first, let me, I mean, I'll, I'll explain this, the, the feature here, and the benefit, but first, let's take a look at the problem, like the industry problem that we're seeing, right, is that uh, it's uh, issues with PV connector issue. Okay, so as you can see here, I mean, that uh, I, I was reading uh, this uh, PVEL and also Helio Volta came up with a, uh, a report uh, on specifically this issue of issues with mismatch connectors and wear and tear in poor installation of connectors. In other words, that uh, over time, the connectors are not properly connected and because of wear and tear, you start to have issues in the connector leading giving the number to catastrophic failures. This report here, you know, uh, that uh, it's available online. It's uh, saying that they inspected the number several sites and it uh, were about, they were about, uh, they found that about 70% of the sites had issues with connectors. And if not treated, if not caught early enough, it can lead, right, I mean, what you're seeing here, right, I mean, leading to issues like melting the connector, ground fault, and even leading to fires, right? So if not caught early enough, it can lead to catastrophic, catastrophic, uh, catastrophic failures. 
And the only way, right, I mean, today up to now, to, to check on that is you can actually go into the field and do like thermal imagery, like with like a thermal uh, device, right, I mean, to check on potential uh, higher temperature on the contact, okay? So this is actually, right, I mean, keeping this in mind with this problem in the industry, uh, we came up with a, uh, Sora Edge came up with a patent and innovative solution here that we measure the temperature of the connector at the output level, at the output of the of this optimizer. Okay, so the the optimizer, the output of this, uh, where you have like higher current going through your string, uh, we measure the temperature uh, of the of the connector. Right, and uh, to see if there is if, uh, if there is a problem going on uh, on the connector, and we, we catch that before things happen. Right, so even before, so we constantly monitor, and if there is a problem going on, we catch that and we bring that the system down and we disable uh, the system, catching that early, preventing catastrophic failures. Okay, so let's. Uh, on here so this is in, that's kind of summary what we do so we detect early issues with the connectors as soon as that's detected the system is placed into safe mode right i mean we bring not only disable not only we turn off the inverter but also all of the optimizers are brought to one volt dc right so it's one volt dc at the output of the, of the optimizers the string level about 30 volts dc so not only, I mean, you're, you're, you're risking, right? Any issues if there is a problem there, if there is a solution, if there's a problem. And then we set a warning to the monitor platform to let the operation and maintenance team know where to look for the issue, okay? So this is an algorithm that's looking across the whole array and checking for temperature mismatches, checking for for outliers and the temperature of the connector. And it's a smart uh, algorithm that's not looking at the absolute temperature, right, of each connector, but it's looking across uh, all of the optimizers and seeing if there is an outlier. And then uh, if there is a problem, it detects and let the op operation and maintenance team know that there's a, might, there might be a problem for inspection. So a few more items, right? I mean, so this is a, uh, not only from a sense connect, but also from an electric perspective. This optimizer can take up to two 600 watts uh, panels in series. Uh, we support up to 23 kW uh, string oversizing. So that means that you can make longer strings and Jeff is going to be talking about that. And system monitor, right? I mean, we, uh, there is a, uh, you know exactly where the thing should don't want to bore you, but here's a technical specifications, a few items, right, I mean, to, to discuss. I mean, to use an 18M output uh, uh, on, the, on the output of the inverter, 1200 watts, 125 volts DC per, so be two, uh, per two panels, that 125 volts DC. So that's the optimizer. Efficiency, it's the same as the P1100. Uh, so that's the, this is, that's optimizer. It is available online, the data sheet, and uh, we can point you uh, directly where it is, and Barsha will be talking about the resources that we have in mind. So <clears throat> cable layout, well, I like to put this so that you folks know, right, in terms of if you were to replace into design, start to design now with the S1200, on the right-hand side, you are seeing what how the P1100, P1101 is. Today, you have the output cables, 1.6 meters, and the output cables 2.4 meters each. The new optimizer is that has the same input cable length, and but on the output you have one lead as 5.3 meters and the other lead 0.1 meter. So one is long, the other one short lead, and the short lead that's where we measure the temperature. Okay, but from a uh, perspective that if you need to replace that, right, I like to design a system that has already been designed. The total length is the same, so you are not going to need to need to place jumpers on the on a system that has already been designed with the P1100. 
So, water information here. Last slide from my side is that the S series inverter, the optimizers, is available for orders. So, you have S1200 for ground mount applications, S1201 for rooftop applications that require rapid shutdown compliance. Uh, also, a few couple of things, you know, I mean, that's different that uh, we didn't, didn't have is that we also you can off, offer seals, uh, like a kit, you know, I mean, 100. Uh, a kit with 100 seals to protect the connection. Let's suppose that you install the optimizers, but you're not, you haven't strung that yet. So you put those seals in them to protect the connection to avoid you moving inside that. And the other one is star washers, right? I mean, we're not starting with this optimizer, we are not providing star washers with the optimizer. We're seeing that the racking companies, they already have their own solution. So uh, if you need, uh, Star washers, you can order that via our price list. Uh, one thing also is that uh, if uh, the S1200 is electrically compatible with the P1100, so project design with the P1100 can be converted to S1200 if needed. But it's very important, folks, is that the P and the S series optimizer should not be mixing the same string. Okay. If you need help with that, please contact your salesperson or applications engineers and we'll guide through that. Okay, with that, I'll pass that on to Jeff. All right, thank you, Clever. If you'd like to go to uh, the next slide. Okay, on this slide, uh, we have some images that kind of show how things connect at the string level. Uh, so the top row we have we have modules in in, in portrait orientation, and you can see uh, how they're connected on the input side of the optimizer. So one of the input leads would connect to the first module. The two modules would connect together in series, and then the other side of the second module would return um, to the input connector um, on the optimizer. And uh, you know, as, as Clever mentioned, we have a, a short lead on the output side and a very long one. Um, 15, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, it's right around 17 and a half feet for the long one. So in portrait orientation, uh, there will be a little extra cable to coil up and manage, but um, it's, so, and, and they're connected, um, optimizer outputs are connected in series and, and they're most typically connected uh, in order. So. So the first one would connect to the one right next to it, uh, and then to the third one, and and so on. And so if that's if, if that's the method of connection, there will be a little extra output wire that you do need to manage. Uh, the middle uh, image here is for landscape orientation, and that's why we have such a long lead, so that um, you know the the long lead is is able to re to span two PB modules, uh, two large PB modules. Um, and without um, need for jumpers or anything like that. We've designed it so that they, uh, two optimizers can reach uh, each other if they're spaced you know, two modules apart. Then the last image here on the bottom uh, is leapfrogging or skip stringing. And this is often done um, on single axis trackers where there's a single row modules that are in portrait. And so this is really, it accomplishes two things. Uh, it, it uses up, some of the wire that, that you might have left over if you went um, to the very next optimizer in the in the in the string. So instead of connecting to the next optimizer in the string, we jump over that one and connect to the second one down. And so this does a couple things. Like I said, it'll use up some of the extra wire that you might have to coil up and wire manage. It also allows you to you know go all the way up to one end, you know every other module, and then turn around and come back. The other way, uh, every other module, and it prevents you from having to run kind of a long uh, return wire from the you know from the far end of of the uh, module row. So that's one of the reasons uh, it, you know it's pretty commonly done on single axis trackers. That way, both the positive and negative uh, connectors for the string are at the same end. Uh, it also works out you know on a balustrade rooftop if you have you know fairly long rows that would support you know an entire an entire string of modules. Uh, next slide, please. So we have a couple of slides here talking about design rules um, with, you know, the 1100 series and the 1200 series optimizers. 
their, you know, their output, their, their electrical characteristics on the output side are the same. Uh, so they, you know, limit string current to 18 amps. They each have a maximum output voltage of 80 volts. So the minimum string length guidelines are going to be the same for both of them. Um, so minimum string length would be 10 optimizers in series, and then one of those could have a single module. So we could have 10 optimizers, 19 modules for string. And then the maximum, we, we do have um, a theoretical maximum here of you know, 30 optimizers and 60 modules. Um, I say theoretical because we really determine maximum string length based on power rating, and then which is the, the last three rows that I'll talk about here in a second. So the theoretical maximum you would probably never reach unless you had modules that were really fairly low power rating, much lower than we typically see today. So the maximum continuous power per string uh, for our 208 volt inverters uh, is based on a fixed string voltage of 490 volts DC. So if you take 490 volts times 18 amps, you come up with kind of this base uh, power level per string of, of 8,820 watts. And this would be considered uh, a string, uh, a maximum string length with no string oversizing. So it's it's kind of it, it, there's no oversizing. It's it's really just kind of a baseline maximum string length. However, we do allow um, string oversizing, and that's what the last two rows here are all about. Uh, the the row that says one string per inverter, this is roughly uh, 13 to 15 percent over over the baseline. And so this is something you know we're just very comfortable with. It, it, it's exactly like a DC to AC ratio on an inverter, uh, typically um, 15 to 20 percent over the uh, inverter nameplate rating, just because you know PV modules rarely produce you know their their maximum power rating, their SDC rating. So we're very comfortable allowing you um, to, to oversize by 13 to 15 percent, since it's not very likely that the um, it will actually force the optimizers to limit current with that with that kind of a power level. And then the last row here is for two strings or more. And so with two strings uh, here, you know, we have enough DC power that now the inverter is actually going to be limiting current on the strings. So again, you know, we won't actually approach, you know, the 18 amp maximum per, per string because with two strings and this much, you know, DC power, the inverter maximum input current would actually be limiting current on the two strings. So in this scenario, uh, we allow a lot more power per string uh, than a single string design. So we allow, allow a lot more string oversizing. And so one of the advantages to the 1200 series um, is we do allow a bit more um, power per string than, than we do with the P1100, P1101. So we're up to uh, 13 kilowatts per string um, with the uh, S1200, 1201. Next slide, please. So same type of information. This is for our 480 volt three phase inverters. Uh, we operate uh, the fixed DC voltage here much higher than we do at 208. Uh, so we're at 850 volts. So, um, you know, all of the minimum string lengths and maximum string lengths increase due to the fact that we have, you know, much higher DC voltage. Uh, at the at the at the uh, inverter input level, so minimum um, string length went up for both you know 1100 and 1200 series. So we need at least 14 optimizers, and again one of those could have a single module. So 14 optimizers, 27 modules. Theoretical maximum is the same at 30 and 60, but uh, the base calculation you know quite a bit higher than we have at at, at 208. So 18 amps times 850 volts gets us to kind of a base power level with no oversizing of 15.3 kilowatts. So with two strings or less, uh, since you know the um, inverter power ratings are much higher at, at 480, um, you know we, our, our kind of minimum requirement for power is a little bit higher as well. So with two string design. Um, here again, we're at 13 to 15% up above the base. So we're at 17.55 kilowatts per string. And then um, 
again, since with three strings, now the inverter is going to be limiting total spring current. Uh, we're comfortable with much more oversizing. So 20.3 for the P1100 series, and then much higher, or a little bit higher, uh, for the S1200, S1201 at 23 kilowatts. And next slide, clever. So this um, kind of summarizes some of the some some of what we've learned. Um, this was from a BOS comparison we did for a 500 kilowatt rooftop. And so what we did here is we compared um, Solar Edge inverter, the 120 kilowatt inverter uh, with a 480 volt uh, grid connection. Uh, the competitor's inverter uh, was 1,000 volt strings, uh, also 480 volt grid connection. And um, with P1101, you know, we had, uh, you know, less, well, a little, little bit, uh, you know, half the, half the total quantity of strings that we did compared against a um, traditional string inverter that was limited to, hold on, limited to modules of, uh, sorry, 17 modules for string. So we had 28 strings of 38 and 40 modules versus 65 strings of 17. Uh, we only needed around 9,000 feet of wire versus 21,000 feet of wire for the competitor. And uh, that worked out to be, uh, you know, for the P1101, around $6,600. And that's for PV wire and the labor required to install it versus, you know, 15.8 um, thousand dollars <throat> for wire and the labor to install it. So with, with the S1200, S1201, we do um, allow slightly more oversizing at the string level. Works out to be approximately two more modules for string at 208, and then approximately five more modules for string at 480. For this particular uh, BOS comparison, we were actually able to get six more modules per string due to the fact that they were fairly low power. They were around 450 watts. And the next slide, please. Uh, another design rule change that's that's new. Uh, this is something that we put into place uh, last fall for both um, the 1100 series and the 1200 series. You know, prior to prior to last fall, uh, we we uh, with with string oversizing, we want to keep the strings somewhat balanced. We want to try to prevent them from having to actually current limit, um, if possible. And so what we were doing prior to last fall is we were keeping the strings. Uh, to within 2,000 watts of each other, and that's for a 480 volt installation. So what you know, based on you know some of the field data that we've been getting, and, and you know optimize reliability, those sorts of things, we've decided to uh, increase the delta between the strings when we allow string oversizing. So instead of having a 2,000 watt delta, we now just allow you to use uh, five optimizers for string. Which makes it, you know, a bit, a bit, a bit simpler to, to calculate. Also supports, you know, a, a much larger delta in terms of power, depending on, uh, depending on the size of the PV modules that you're using. So it could be up to um, six kilowatts per string of delta, depending on um, how large the modules are that you're using. And uh, next slide, please. And just kind of kind to kind of summarize the previous slide. Um, you know, we, we used to try to keep strings somewhat balanced uh, to prevent them from current limiting. Uh, for our 480 volt inverters, we wanted to keep that delta at two kilowatts. For our 208 inverters, we wanted to keep that delta at one, at one kilowatt. And then um, if you were at the base power level that I was uh, talking about earlier, um, we really didn't care about a delta. Um, the, the power level would not cause the inverters to reach their current limits, so we were okay with no with no delta if you were not taking advantage of string oversizing. So now we've kind of simplified simplified that whole uh, design rule situation by just uh, making the delta between oversized strings at five power optimizers. And next slide. So now uh, we'll turn it over to Varsha to talk about some of the alerts available in the monitoring platform. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for that uh, technical deep dive on the SCVs. Um, all right, let's take a look at how uh, monitoring alerts appear when they are triggered by Sense Connect. Um, next slide, please. 
So, so to navigate to the alerts section, um, you will be clicking on the alerts tab in the monitoring platform, as you can see in the screenshot. Um, and by default, only open alerts are shown on the screen and are sorted in the ascending order of the alerts impact value. And alerts can be viewed both at an account level as well as a site level. So on an account level, you will see all the alerts that have been raised for all sites of a specific account. Um, and if you click on the three dots on the right side of the alerts list uh, that's highlighted by yellow in the screenshot, you can access the site level information or you can also click on just the alert name directly. So that's when there will be a pop up window that opens up with additional information about the alert, a description of the event and some troubleshooting guidelines. So let's take a look at that. Um, next slide, please. So yeah, here's, here's an example of an alert that is generated by a Sense Connect event triggered on an optimizer. So this is where in the event of, an, uh, of increased temperature at the power optimizer output connector, an alert of impact level nine was triggered and the panel that is uh, affected will be flagged by an, via an alert that looks like the screenshot on this slide. Um, and as you can see, the alert also provides some uh, you know, specific troubleshooting tips uh, so you can figure out which uh, specific panel was affected. Next slide, please. Um, so if you look um, in the site level alert pop-up, you can also view location information by clicking on actions in the drop-down menu and select view and layout tab. So this, this is where uh, you can pinpoint to where the fault exactly occurred and provided that the site was previously mapped the location of the inverter and the power optimizer that triggered this event is indicated with an exclamation point and an orange border. Um, I know that the, the screenshot is probably too small, but we will send you a copy of this text so you can take a look, a uh, closer look at the screenshots there. Um, so yeah, the, um, the triggered alert will allow the ONM and the service provider to quickly be directed to the affected power optimizer for quick servicing. Um, and finally, on the next slide, you will see that the affected inverter is also indicated with an exclamation point and an orange border. Um, okay, moving on to the marketing resources for S series. Um, you can learn more about the S series using the commercial web page that we have uh, that you can access by uh, going to solaredge.com slash US. Uh, and then navigating to products and clicking on power optimizers, um, commercial power optimizers. And then there's also a YouTube video, uh, a training eMod that goes through the product in more detail, as well as a, a brochure that you can locate on the web page as well. Um, all right, um, moving on, I just wanted to do a quick touch on Advantage here. Um, so Advantage is a program that was introduced by SolarEdge uh, that covers potential production loss uh, resulting from any power optimizer downtime for sites that are 100 kilowatts and above. So all power optimizers in an eligible site are in an eligible site is um, covered for up to six months per power optimizer. And enrolled sites will be covered for a two year period. Um, and just so you guys know, the Advantage report containing all the relevant power optimizer coverage details is available for download at any time via the SolarEdge monitoring platform. Uh, and SolarEdge would also send the Advantage report to the EPC every six months, fully detailing the relevant coverage. If you are interested in, in learning more about this program, please feel free to reach out to us and you know, we'll, we'll direct you to the right individuals to talk to. And last but not the least, I wanted to give you a quick plug here uh, on our commercial installer certification training. So if you haven't taken this training yet, we highly recommend that you take the course to learn all the best practices um, of installing our three phase uh, products, enabling for smoother installations as well as easier O&M. Uh, it is a four hour course um, uh, and once you complete it, you will be able to uh, get about four NAPSEP CEO credits as well. Um, okay, and uh, I think with that, um, I just want to point you to some resources on our website that you can take advantage of. Uh, we've got a wealth of resources, including commercial catalogs, uh, data sheets, fact sheets, um, app notes, uh, as well as a few case studies as well that's housed on our commercial page. Um, next slide, please. 
yeah, th those are all the case studies. It's again housed on the commercial web pages. And uh, with that, uh, I will kick it back to Julia <laughs> to open up the forum for some Q&A. Awesome, thanks everybody. We have a lot of good questions coming in. So the first one that was asked was, when is the webinar for the DC single input? And they also would like to know, are all three phase inverters listed in service currently for purchase? So yeah, the webinar for the DC single input is going to be happening sometime towards the later part of March. So likely third week of March. So stay tuned that we'll be sending an, uh, an email to announce that. And then I think is the second part of the question if all of the inverters are listed, is that correct? Yeah, they asked if all the three phase inverters listed in service current are currently for purchase. Uh, yes, they're all, all of the inverters that are listed you know, that you presented here they are available for purchase. Great. They also asked, um, are all three phase inverters capable of the 175% oversizing? <clears throat> Good question, yes. So the new inverters, they are. So I mean, so, uh, but there are previous inverters, right? I mean, depending with the way they have changed, right? I mean, they're on the platform uh, in 2021. So inverters previous to that change, they are not capable of 170%, but all of the new the new inverters that actually I would like to say have an eye, you know, I mean, so if you look at the data sheet, there's a sample, like a generic part number, there's an eye, then yes, that's uh, all of the three phase that we presented here, they have the 175% DC to C ratio capability. Great. Next, um, you were asked, are these optimizers, the S1200, the S1201, and the H1300 available for use now? S1200 and 1201, yes, they are. They have been on the price list since uh, September, since the September version of the price list. So it is available to be purchased. Actually, this is the only one that's available right now for purchase on the commercial inverters the three phase inverters and the h1300 which is for the large inverter is uh not available at this point you know, for purchase however if you have a project later this year or for 2024 uh please contact your sales person uh solar edge sales representative that you can start talking Next up, can DC circuits with any of your optimizer, any of your optimizers P or S series be megared? And that is the circuit including the modules and optimizers as well as connecting cables. Yes, um, so, so we do have a ground fault troubleshooting app note. Uh, and so what typically happens is you would disconnect the string from the inverter. You would connect the positive and negative conductors together and then measure those, you know, the whole pair um, to ground. And we recommend setting that at the 500 volt um, setting on the, on, the, on the instrument. Great. Um, is the S1201 compatible in the same string as the P1101? No, if it's in the same string, they cannot be installed in, in the same string. So uh, there are, we could, there could be, there could be like P1101 and S1201 could be installed within the same inverter. So let's suppose if an inverter has three strings, you could create one string with P1101s and the other string with the S1201, but they cannot be placed in the same string. Then what is the difference between a power optimizer versus a microinverter? So, uh, Jack, do you want to take that one? Sure, sure. So, so a microinverter is doing, you know, maximum power point tracking to the modular modules connected, and then doing a full conversion to AC, you know, right at that point, you know, right behind the module. 
So all the circuits from uh, the PV array to you know the utility connection would be would be AC circuits. Um, and so so each you know MLPE box or device uh, is is a full inverter from DC to AC right at that point. Um, where um, an optimizer is is much less complicated at the at the at the module level at the PV array. We're just um, we're also doing PowerPoint tracking of a module, a single module or two modules uh, in, a, in the commercial case. Uh, but then we're not inverting to AC at that point. We're just doing a buck or a boost of the DC voltage and then making um, the transition from the PV array to wherever the inverter is located um, at, at, at a higher voltage uh, using you know, the, the, the DC, DC circuit, essentially. Great. Next, someone said, in the beginning of the P-series, there were some quality issues which dissipated over time. What have you done to make sure that we don't have similar issues with the new S-series? Yeah, so with, uh, I think I'll say that we've, uh, we've done uh, several testing, right, and several tests. And the, the architecture, the, the platform has not changed from the P to S-series. So, it's been built over time, so all of the improvements that have been that was made and have been made in the P series platform is also has also been done in the S series. So tests and the availability and the reliability of the optimizers have uh, have improved significantly. So all of the lessons learned, all of the changes in that one platform has also been imported to the to the S series. And what is the warranty on the inverters? So the warranty on the inverters is 12 years as a standard and 20 extendable up to 20 years. The optimizers is 25 years. Great. And how much clipping happens in full irradiance if the inverter is loaded up to 150% or so? Boy, um, so up to 123, 125, there's little to no uh, annual clipping. And then when you start to approach um, 150%, you know, it, and it, you know, and it depends a great deal about the installation, right? What's the what's the location? What's the the tilt and azimuth of the array? Uh, there's there's a lot of factors, but but you know, we see somewhere in the neighborhood of um, five to six percent cl um, clipping loss annually. With string oversizing, the delta between strings is up to six kilowatts. So anything below that is allowed. Is that six kilowatt difference required for an acceptable configuration? Yeah, so, so the delta would have to be six kilowatts or less in order to be uh, acceptable. And are all of your three-phase inverters, UL1741, SB, and 1547-2018 uh, certified? Good question. Yes. And this is a very good, uh, we should, uh, should have talked about this. They are, yes. All of the inverters that are available today, the data sheet, you know, yes, speaking, they have UL1741, SB, as in boy, and uh, which is also uh, is required, I mean, require, requires 54728. So, yes, to answer the questions, all of them are certified for the latest UL 1741. Who can um, they call if they want to get certification to get certified for residential? I want to say, I think I'll say, I mean, the certification details and you know, all of the inverters that are located in the in our website. But uh, I think we partially, if you could just uh, put our like a call call in mm -hmm. number, you know, the call center, they can point us in point uh, in the right direction. But all of including including the reservation inverters, they are also in law 1741 SP certified.
And this seems to be our last question we have here. Are there any important implications or issues with using residential size modules with the 208 or 480 volt inverters? And which optimizers would you use? Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to say there's no real, um, ne you know, negative impact to, to doing that. Um, you know, the, the ones that we're currently selling can be used with, with much smaller modules. You know, we sometimes on, on, on 208 systems will use um, residential optimizers, which are, you know, intended for a single module. Um, you know, we, we can we sometimes do that to, to, hit, to hit the desired module count. Um, so, so, that, so there's really no negative impact to, uh, to doing that. Great. Yeah, and so I, think, I just would like to make a comment, right? So that's one more reason to use designer. If you use designer, you're going to be able, designer will point you in the right direction, will let you know what optimizer to use and what optimizer is compatible with the inverter. So uh, make, take advantage of the designer tool, because that's a very powerful tool that our team has, has worked for several years. And uh, so it's a very nice tool for, for, for design. Awesome, we have another question coming in. So can the resi optim optimizers be used in a two to one ratio? Um, typically, no. I mean, it, it, it depends on, you know, if it's, a, if it's an older module, maybe um, low enough power to fit, you know, within the you know, max power rating of the optimizer and then the current and voltage actually works out. Uh, sometimes it's possible, but, but for the most part, it, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work out. So if the designer accepts their configuration, are they good to use it? Yes. Yeah. Great. That seems to be our last question for the day. Um, thank you, everybody from Solar Edge for the presentation. It's great. Thank you, there, Julia. Thank you um, and just and just just to um, quickly summarize, we will send the the deck, um, right, Julia? We we can send the deck as well as the recording. Yeah, the we can have that sent out, and the recording will be sent out as well. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah, thank you so much for hosting us. Yes, thank, thank you, you everyone for attending. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.